Hello everyone, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto from ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad. In the last lecture, we have seen the programming of the graph for the depth first search. In this lecture, we will extend that concept to find out the number of connected components in the given graph. So this is the graph that is having one connected component. And this was the graph that has the three connected components. So I hope before watching this video, you already have seen my previous video, wherein in the given graph, we have this, the first connected component, this, the second connected component, and this one, the third connected component. When we were finding out the depth first search for this, the, for this given graph, in that case, when we have started from the zero, we were going into the depth and we have gone into the depth up to four. After this four in the DFS sequence, we did not find any way to go recursively. Then we have gone in the iterative version and have seen the status of each of the vertex one by one. Then we have found that the status of the vertex number five is zero. It means that has not got visited. So we have started the DFS recursive version from the vertex number five. Now, when we have progressed, we have stopped again at six. We had no way out. So we have again came back to the iterative version of the DFS and have seen the vertex status one by one again. So after six, we have started with seven and the status of the seven was zero. So we have once again restarted our uh, journey from seven. And then from seven, we have gone up to eight, gone up to nine. Then we have once again come back to the iterative version that has seen the status of eight and nine after this system has declared that every single vertex status has been checked and we are ready with the DFS. So now you can see that from DFS iterative version, we are going to the DFS recursive version three times. And this is the total number of the connected components in the graph. It means that this is the first connected component. This is the second connected component. And this is the third connected component. So if you simply include a counter and initialize that counter to zero in the DFS iterative version, and you can check that as many times that that recursive version is called from the iterative one is the same as the number of the connected component in the graph. Now, this was the algorithm that we've written. We are going to make some updation in this algorithm. For example, we are taking, let's say a C, which is representing the number of connected component. Let's initialize that to zero. And whenever you are calling the recursive version of the function from the DFS, you just update this C by one. You increment the C by one. And at the end of the DFS iterative version, you can print the value of the C that will represent the total number of connected component in the graph. Fine. Now, let's say in the graph, we are not only interested in finding out the number of connected components, but we are also interested in finding out the total number of elements in that connected component. So for doing so, the changes will be made in the recursive function. If we have entered the recursive version, so as long as you remain in the recursive version or you, you are into that chain, you are actually into the same connected component. Once you're back in the DFS algorithm, that means the chain has got broken. So every time you call the recursive version from the recursive function, you increment the counter by one. And when you come back again to the DFS, you restart the counting. So meaning that we will have to take a variable in the DFS, which will be initialized to zero. And then that will be incremented in the DFS recursive function every time you remain in there. Fine, so we will write the code for this. By that, you will be in a better position to understand what I'm saying. 
So here for finding out the total number of connected components, I'm taking the C, which is initialized to zero. C is the counter for the total number of connected components. Now C is updated by one every time you call the recursive version. So the moment you are out of this loop, you can simply print that the number of connected components are C. Now, for finding out the number of number of elements in each of the connected component, you can pass a parameter zero here, which is actually the counting of the total number of elements in that connected component, since you have initialized that to zero. When this recursive function will return something, you will have to accept that also. So let's take that as M and let's take another vector and that vector is of integer type and it, it is, let's say, is named as COM, which is representing the number of elements in the connected component. And whatever is the value of this M, that will be pushed back here in this vector. After this DFS function will finish, you can print the, the elements of this vector. So for auto i in form, you just see out the number of elements in each of the connected component and just a space in between or two spaces in between. After printing the number of connected components, you can have the new line. Now let's go back to the recursive version. And in this recursive version, another variable has been passed, which is the number of elements in the given vector. So let's say that is n, not in the given vector, but the number of elements in the connected component. So every time you enter here, you just increment this n value. Whenever you're calling the recursive version, you pass the current value of this n here and accept the new value in n. Fine. And you return this n every time this recursive function gets completed. I once again repeat, the n is zero when it is called from the iterative version. n is incremented by one. It means whenever you are entering to the recursive version, it means that you are going into the depth. So n is incremented by one. When you're calling a recursive version from the recursive version, you pass the current value of n in the function and you accept that in some in the same variable. And finally, when this recursive function is completed, you return the value of n. Let's run this algorithm. This DFS recursive function is returning an integer value. So the return type has been updated as integer. So there is a very basic mistake here that we must declare the variable n. A semicolon is required here. So now we are going to take the input according to the graph on the right hand side. It has 10 vertices and it has nine edges. First edge is 0, 1. Second edge is 0, 2. Sorry, 0, 4. Third edge is 1, 2. Fourth edge is 2 and 3. Fifth edge is 3 and 4. Sixth edge is five and six. Seventh edge is seven and eight. Eighth edge is seven and nine. Ninth edge is eight and nine. So you can see that first it is printing the 
order of the DFS, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The number of connected components are 3. So you can see that the number of connected components are 3. Number of element in the first connected component is 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Number of elements in the second connected component is 2, that is 5 and 6. And the number of elements in the third connected component are 3, which is 7, 8 and 9. So we have implemented this program correctly. These are the references that I took for recording this lecture. Thank you so much for watching this video.